access to their accounts right now. They have their username and passwords, and you don't want them to see what players are on the team because it's changing on a daily basis. You can lock them out at that point. Turn it back off whenever you want. You can do that in bulk. So you can lock all recreational teams from them being able to view their rosters. Really, I would say probably a week or two week period in there because again, they lose access to email tools. They can't, uh, when they go to, if they go to one of our, or any tournament, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, got soccer tournament, they won't be able to adjust their rosters. So that, it's a strong tool. It really locks them out of viewing anything in their account. So it's only utilized for maybe a couple weeks, two, three weeks in a year. Otherwise, these other two, you absolutely want to have checked on them. And they're defaulted. It used to be that they were not defaulted. People would add the team. Now they're defaulted, so that way you guys don't have to remember that every time you create one. And then you go down, you can create the username and passwords for the team. And then once you have all that information in, um, if, if you have all the coaches' information in too, this is where you will assign the coach for the team, it's just a drop down list of all the coaches that are eligible. A lot of calls we get are, oh, the coaches aren't just showing up on the drop down list. They could be because their background check is expired, but they haven't done one. Same for managers, trainers. When you sign the coach in, does it automatically arrange their background checks for you to click another tab? No, the coaches have to log into their individual accounts. So after you put it up, they, it sends them an email, they got to go in every and register. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you hit save to the account. <coughs> Yeah, so any, any questions on, on the teams part? Adding teams, is, you'll see a lot of these pages are very similar. So we saw create player profile, add team, there'll be add coach. The filters are always at the top. So that you'll get used to, as you click through these pages, they'll be very similar in here. You can also email your teams from here. You can use the filtering tools, recreational, competitive, whatever it might be. Check off the boxes and hit email, and then type out the box. Are you only maxed at one email per player account? Um, you, you can add, to... once you add a player into the system and hit save, another tab will pop up that says parents. You can click on that and you can type in the parents' email addresses. So then if you have them assigned to a team and you want to email that team, it emails everybody that's associated with the player and the parents? You can select a recipient type that's players and family as well. There's just like individual players. Are you talking about from the individual team, from within the team account, or from the club account? I'll say from the club account. Say I wanted to email all players, but I wanted to go from all the email addresses that they may have. Do you know that? I think it's the main contact email. I don't think okay. it goes to both. Yeah, that's why I think, actually, I think uh, that's right. <clears throat> when you hit email, see, when you're doing it from the players tab, you can do players, parents, and family account. If you do it from the teams, you only go to the rosters. And I believe when you select rock, well, you can go to rosters. When you show up rosters, I believe that's only the player email, not the two parents. But you can go to that program and just click on the top and it'll check everybody and then it'll send it to every email. And if you go to Club of Players, you can search by a team name. So if you go back there real quick, if you don't know that, you can search by a team name. So you can type in that team name, email them from here, and then do that. Now I can see what probably the next question is, but I've got 20 teams I want to email or whatever it might be. That's a little bit more time consuming. Or if you're just trying to email all the competitive players for all the competitive teams, you can right. do it this way. Right. System. We've got the teams into the system. Now we're going to go on to adding players. Well, they're not on teams. Not on teams yet. Yes, yeah, so we're going to show that in just yeah. a second. And I'll, we'll show you that. When, when you create the teams, you said there's a username and a password. I'm assuming those are mandatory fields. Yes. Do both of those have to be unique, or can one be generic and the other? If you hit, if you hit save, yeah. Will it generate? No, no, one. Well, password right. can be generic. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So the password generic. 
password is going to be the same. We don't recommend it for you know, obvious reasons here, but you want to do that absolutely and then have the coach log in and change it. Is, is there a way to bypass or override the requirement for the email address? Yeah, because some of the parents don't have email addresses. This is I'm one of the most common questions that I get. It's, it's, I mean, we want an email address in just in case the parent declares. FYSA is requiring an email address. Some don't. So we're, we're putting it in there. Very few don't, but and I hear this all the time. And if that's the case, I always suggest creating an email called no email Indian River at gmail.com. Because now not only that, now you have the list to come back and say these are the 20 people that didn't get that message printed out to or probably printed out for yourself to call those parents, call those players, however you communicate with those individuals that don't have email addresses. So create a generic club email and use that anytime that there's not an email address provided. Well, it's hit or miss on, on Thursday. Sometimes it would require that field to be filled in, and sometimes it wasn't. So that filter must not have been, it yeah. wasn't on, on every player. Because it used to be that you didn't have to have an email address in there. So if you go into an account that's been in there for a while, and you go in and just to even view it, and you just save it or get out of it, it'll now ask you if there was no email address in there from two or three years ago. Now yeah. you have to put something in. Yes. In our area, Comcast and Bell South are not accepting that soccer domain. So how would we do that? <laughs> it's the number one. That, I mean, that's a good so question. So everybody's yelling at us. They're not getting their email. That's a good question. Comcast is what what will happen sometimes is people will put in none at Comcast.com or something like that as an email, and we would ask not to do that because Comcast is notorious for we send out or you send out thousand emails and. Their fake Comcast emails, all of a sudden their red flag goes up and says they're trying to you know, fish into the system. So Comcast is the one that is the worst with us. It happens not on a regular basis, but it happens occasionally where they're blocked for a day or two. We have to call them, fill out their paperwork, get off their block list. We've now applied to be on what's called the whitelist, which is auto approval, you know, you know, regardless. I don't know what the pro I don't know where we are in that process. <laughs> Hopefully that will go through. So if you see it's a generic, it's always it's only the people that are saying they don't get our Comcast, call our office letter, let us know, we immediately tell the programmers, they start working on that information. Thank you. Alright, so we're gonna go to coaches now? No, uh, go over to signing players. Oh, signing players with you. I'm just curious um, as far as emailing, obviously you have an option for signing pages. Yes. How does that work? You can do email and, and text messaging at the same time. Again, some of these some of these questions will say for you know a Q and A kind of thing. I don't know if there, there's a lot of sessions going on in the afternoon, but you can. It's called bulletin. Um, if you select bulletin as an option, and you check, and the player has to have their phone number and their carrier in. So at um, att dot I forget what you know, or at vtext.com. So it has to have the carrier that would be Verizon. Some pages there's a list of carriers, some pages there's not. So if you say, you know, if you email out, just include a link to a list of all the carriers in the country and say, you know, if you log in, put your phone number at this carrier.com. So assigning players to the team. Um, so you can filter by gender and by age group. So if you want to, you know, assign all the girls U10s to a team, girls U10 and, and the filter, apply filters. It's going to pull all these up. And then from there, you can just select you know, the certain players you want on a specific team, just by the checkbox. You go up here, and then where it says assign team, you would then select the girls U10 team. And then once you select that, you hit assign, and it's going to say, Are you sure you want to assign these players? You hit OK. And that's the easiest way to assign players to the team. You can do you know, the whole team at one time as long as they're all, they're all chosen and filtered. Because our group was, I think, trying to do it by like zip code. We're trying to sort all the players by a certain zip code or a zip code range, and try to keep players really right. close together and practice together. Is there a way to do that? If you click on the word zip in the dark blue there, and I think if you click on that, it'll it's going to go highest to lowest. Okay. So you can do your girls and U10, and it's going to filter within here. I don't believe there's a filter up top. No. Zip, right, so you just, at all of these, if you click on anything with dark blue, it will filter high to low. Click on it twice, it goes back you know, to low on there. So you can do it that way. Another, so this is just if you're, if you 
you've been using the system, a nice tool if you don't know this, I always select under rostered on the top, no. So that way you're pulling up only the list. So when you build team number one, and those, you've had that 100 players, you build those, that 10 players onto that team, those 10 players fall off the list. So as you build one more teams, it becomes quicker and quicker to just check, check, check. You don't have to look through all the players that are already assigned to a team. So if you select rostered, no. That will save you time on building your teams. And that's just rostered in this club account. That's not rostered. Exactly. Yeah. That's a terrible term on our part. <laughs> Ask them to change that. Yeah, should just say it. Yeah, it should say you know, sign it. That's how to assign players to a team. Um, again, if there's you can do it in each individual player account as well. Any questions with assigning players? I have a question. Up on the top, you have Team Builder. What is that? Good question. If you use us for online registration, it's called the Team Builder. This is a random generation, mostly for rec, pretty much strictly for rec teams. You can use different tools. So up top. You can sort by recreational. You can do this age to that age, so maybe U9 to U10. And here's where you can do, under grouping, you can select zip code. And it will build them based on zip code. Again, this is a tool only if you use this for all my registration. If you don't, this isn't available inside of your account. And it's drag and drop. You can drag and drop, but there's also an auto generation. So you can say um, team size of 12. And you could set a, I believe there's evenly distributed up here. Yeah, under method on the far right, full team size or evenly distributed. So if you have 95 players in that age group, you've got 10 teams where 10 players are going on each. It's going to put nine onto every team. It's going to leave those five off, and then you can just drag and drop and say these are the teams that are going to get the 10th player. So if you do both paper and online, you can well, if you use this for online registration, if you have access to what's that programs tab up there, if you pay us $3 per player per year for online registration, then you do. So someone said that they use Active over there, they would not have access to this. They use another system to do online registration. Yeah, I know we just use Got Soccer, but we do pay for registration and online. Yeah, then it, it will be there. If you take payments through our system where the players sign up from home, they pay on, online, that's available inside of that uh, section. I don't believe so, but again, this is where I, you can use the tools to kind of play around with them, where you can say all girls, team size of five, do all the girls, so it puts five girls on, then do boys, come back evenly to shipping to five, and do boys and put five on. So sometimes there's not a, a way to exactly do it, but if you play around, you'll, you'll be able to figure that out. This still assumes you were there early when you created the teams. Exactly, the teams still have to be created. The, building the teams is always the last step. Well, yeah. it doesn't have to be. Yeah, before, the, before you get assigned to a team. It will auto create the teams. Right. It's not the teams. It's not building the teams. Right. Um, All right, so any, any other, other questions on players and, and teams? on ID numbers, how to match and generate ID numbers, you go to club customization. Almost everything that you do is going to be under the club tab until you go to the official rosters, then we go to the registrar tab. Click on club customization and ID numbers. What you're going to do here is say add player ID numbers. That's going to generate ID numbers for anybody that doesn't already have one. And I believe 
Okay, see if in, in Florida, God ID is a unique ID number. Got it? So if you delete all the ID numbers and then you regenerate them, it's a random number. It's going to change that player's ID number. So in your case, you really just want to hit add player ID. So that's going to only do it for the ones that are NA, that do not have one at all. For team IDs, that's a set code. It's going to be the same ID number regardless of how many times you delete and recreate it because you can see the template up here. It's based on club code, team year, and so forth. You can use this access deletion. You can delete everybody at once and recreate them. That would probably that would only be beneficial in your case for the team IDs. I would not do that for any player, any coach, because these are unique numbers. They've already printed passes. It's going to have a different number in the system. Coaches, club coaches, and you can see the list. And if you want to add a coach, again, create coach profile. Um, here you're just going to, again, basic information. And here you can leave the username and password blank. Hit save and it'll auto generate a username and password. And again, when they receive this, uh, when, when you hit save, it's going to send an email to them and it's going to ask them to log in. But you can create specific language. I believe it's under customization. So after you create that, or before you start creating coach profiles, you go to user notifications under club and customization. And then for new coaches, you can add language. Um, is, thank you for volunteering. If you don't have language in here already, and by the way, um, this can really be broken down in my opinion into two steps. Is the username and password and link below to log in. Click on background checks in the gray menu bar and complete the check. We have it broken down to seven. We literally have click submit as an instruction. I mean, some of those things are. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I'm sure, exactly. Yeah. That's, why okay. yeah. That's why it's okay. That's why it's okay. So if you don't have this in your account, you can contact FYSA. You can contact us. We'll get you that suggested language. Copy and paste it. And this will only go in every time you create a new coach. All you need for when, if you go back to Club and Coaches, all you need for that is first name, last name, and email. If you have those three pieces of information, it's going to create a coach account and email that language. Yes? Are coaches accounts unique to the club? For instance, if a coach comes from another club over, because I've done that last week where coaches are not a club, I find his account, but there's no access to like a player where you can import them in. Correct. I don't see that for a coach, so you have to, you have to create a new account for him and your club? Correct. The, the only way around that, the only, there is not a like a, an import, like if you go to players, so that's correct. The only way around that is if you create a team, if, there, if you and the club are talking, you know. Uh, now, if you if he coaches, are you talking about someone coaches from multiple clubs? Or no, 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 he was just coaching the club last year and I was at Okay, the if, if they put him on a team, you can import that team and it will bring the coach over. So if they put him on a team called No Longer Here, and you take that, they give you the username and password, and they just put them on that team, you can import them into yours that way. It's a workaround. It requires that you and another registrar communicate. Sometimes, you know, neighboring clubs don't have great relationships, so it doesn't work out every too well. But well, on the flip side of that, a coach that used to coach at our club and now at another club, but I notice he's still using his access from our club because obviously he has his login and whatnot. Now, I have his not registered. So he's not being billed to me, but I can see him, and it's the only one about other coaches that are gone that's not there. But his is active. You can tell he's been. Uh, he would need to have another account in the other club. You can't be a coach on, an, on the other club's team without being in their account. And since there isn't really a simple way to import, what most clubs do is they just create a coach account. Especially if one is coaching for multiple clubs, then you have to have a coach account with this <laughs> club, a coach account with that club. So okay. the only reason I'm not wondering if he's using that account is because the background check is showing approved on our end. They only do one background check, and I can attest to that part. If, he, if he's in the system from the other club and he was background checked, it's when he comes to yours, they just go through the list and match on him and bring the status, and they don't go up. got a different account, it's still Even if he had a different account, the background check carries. They only do it once. Can you match that like you can it's not to merge your account? Can you, I'm sorry, can you, can you go in and search for your background? Yeah, and you go back to club coaches. Check before it's, this is going to, you know, again, this is what he 
things that the name, you know, has to be exactly how it was that you submitted the background check with, the birth date, the gender, and if they hit check reports, it's going to. So you only have to do a background check once, whether it be as a board member, team coach, team manager, whatever it might be. <laughs> registration, they can use that username and password to sign up for another club. Most clubs don't do a coach registration. They do, you know, hey, if you're willing to volunteer, whether it be on the field, they go up to them and they say yes. Or during their child's registration, they have a question, are you willing to volunteer to be a coach? And they say yes. So most coaches don't sign up their registration. If a club does use that, they can use that username and password, sign up for that club, and that will then take them out of yours and put them in theirs. It's not, it's not too commonly used. Really, what you might just want to do is remove him, unless you want to keep that contact in you can just remove him from the club altogether. And he'll still have that account, just remove some from the club. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? You're saying we can click the remove button there? Yes. Remove or delete. It's and that only removes him from our club, it doesn't take him, because we've been advised never touch that remove button on a player, on right. a coach, because that, it will remove him from his child's soccer. No. That's the old, um, the old registrar for Florida used to always say that. And for the most part, it's a good idea. The big red buttons are usually not good buttons. <laughs> they, you, you push it, and then you go and you say, we had someone call up and say, I accidentally deleted 200 players. That's why we don't allow mass deletes. They went in and individually accidentally deleted 200 players. <laughs> so you know, that's why we don't, that's why that was there. Don't use the, um, 